Let me just get some volume. That's all I'm asking for in life. All right, so today it is Foundation Friday. Happy Foundation Friday, friends. I did a poll on Snapchat between two foundations asking you guys which one you wanted to see. It was between the JCAT Cushion Compact Foundation, this is a new cushion foundation, and the CoverGirl Clean Sensitive Liquid Foundation, that's all it's called. The CoverGirl one won by over half. So we're doing this one today. Let me know if you still wanna see the JCAT Cushion Foundation down below. So this product by CoverGirl is not totally new but it has an improved formula or that's what it says on here i did some research to figure out what is up with this foundation and the og version is like a blue bottle then they made a version where it has a green label and then now the new improved formula has this white label so if you have the other two i'm assuming they're different formulas this one was on a new end cap display kind of thing so you get one fluid ounce of product in here. It retails for between about $5.99 and $8.99. The bottle is pretty annoying. It has the old school just like pour out kind of bottle with the screw on tap, tap, top. The claims on this foundation are pretty dang limited. The most I could find out about this was on CoverGirl's website and it says, sensitive skin dreams of a foundation this light and delicate. CoverGirl's clean sensitive, okay, blah, blah, blah. Unscented, oil-free formula, soothes redness and moisturizes flaky, sensitive skin without irritating or clogging pores. It comes in nine shades. I have the shade 505 Ivory, which is the lightest shade. I have combination skin with cystic acne, so I tend to get oily throughout the day on my T-zone especially. In the past, CoverGirl foundations typically haven't worked very well for me. I find that they oxidized a ton on my skin. So I'm going to insert some swatch comparisons so you can see how this foundation compares to some of the other products that I own. I have on this scrunchy shirt thing, so we can just ignore that. Right here is the CoverGirl foundation in the shade 505. Next to it is Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless 110, L'Oreal True Match in C1, and MAC Studio Fix in NW10. Keep in mind that I just applied all these, so if any of these are going to oxidize, they haven't yet. I am starting to buy and collect foundations for the next 15 days of foundation, which is November 5th to the 20th. So make sure to let me know, tweet me, snap me, whatever, what you wanna see for 15 days of foundation. This video will be going up right before I'm about to leave for New York. So if you're in the New York area, I'm doing a Bayrito meetup and a Malpal meetup. Um, Mallory1712 and I are doing a meetup with Julep September 30th. I'm gonna have all the details for the meetup down below, but I would love to see you guys there and meet you in real life. That would be freaking awesome, so you should come. Like always, the playlist for Foundation Friday will be linked down below. If you missed any of these videos, I do a new first impression video every single Friday. So if you wanna see how this foundation applies and where it's throughout the day, you're in the right place, just keep watching. Pin back the hair. I had to take one of my migraine pills a couple hours ago, so I'm feeling pretty drowsy right now, but my head feels better. So I've already primed my face with the Jouer Anti-Blemish Matte Primer. This has been one of my favorites lately. <coughs> what was that? This primer has been one of my favorites lately. It is pretty pricey, but it has cell silk acid in it, and I just feel like my skin really likes this. So like usual, I'm gonna do a brush on one side of my face and a sponge on the other side. Today I have the Sigma F80 Flat Kabuki Brush. This is one of my favorite brushes for foundation. It doesn't have a pump. You just have to pour it out and hope a shit ton doesn't come out. Whoa, this is super liquidy, very liquidy. It looks kind of light, we'll see. So I'm gonna start with a brush on this side of my face and I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of stipple it on that palette and let's go to town. I feel like I'm forgetting to do something. So lately, I've actually been kind of spot concealing before I put on foundation because you just have to use way less product. I don't know why I haven't been doing that for like years, but I've been really liking it. Okay, this has pretty good coverage. But for my first impression videos, I'm not gonna be doing that because then you can't actually see how much the foundation covers up on its own. So this looks light. I have weirdly some color right now. I don't know what's going on. I've never had color in my entire life. But this summer, I like weirdly got a little, not tan, but like, I'm not my normal ghost ghost white self. I don't know if there's still some like self tanner left over, or if it's just freckles, so I look darker. I don't know what's going on. I literally have never gotten a tan in my life, so it's confusing time. CoverGirl foundations almost always oxidize on me. The 3-in-1 foundation, 
I legit turn orange by the end of the day. It's sitting on my skin decently. I wouldn't say it looks like great. I still see my redness and like zits and stuff coming through. But just on that one layer with a brush, I feel like it's about medium coverage maybe. I do feel like this one is gonna build, so we'll, we'll see. I will do a second layer. Yeah, right now this is actually looking a little bit light. I'm using about a quarter size amount of product. So that was a quarter size on half of my face. So now I'm gonna go with my Real Technique sponge for the other side. It has better coverage than I was expecting. Like that covered pretty dang well, that redness. So I think I like it better with the sponge. Yeah, finish wise, it looks way nicer with the sponge. You can just see less texture on my face. In my time right now when I'm filming this, I'm actually going to the salon tomorrow for hopefully the silver. Probably sick of me talking about this because I feel like I'm updating you in every video since these are all pre-recorded. But that's why pretty much all the blue grayish is out of my hair right now because I washed it like three times last night to get it all out before I go into her. Satin matte finish, but more on the matte side. So I'm gonna go in with a thin second layer just to see if we can build this up. And I'm gonna use a sponge. So I do like how it applies better. Okay, not bad, you guys. So this is with about one and a half layers. I did do a pretty thin second layer. It looks a little bit heavy around my pores. I'm hoping that doesn't cake up throughout the day. I think you can definitely see my pores right now, even on the middle of my forehead right here, but it doesn't look horrible. With two layers, we got about I would say high medium coverage. I swear it's almost already starting to oxidize. The shade of it does look more normal. So here's a close up. I can't dim the softbox light um, like I used to be able to with the ring light. I'm gonna do the next check-in in natural lighting so you guys can really see how it looks. Our check-in time is gonna be 9.10 and I'm gonna do the rest of my makeup and then I will be right back. All right, the rest of my makeup's on. It's now 9.45, but I'm gonna call the check-in time 9.10 since that's when I finish the face. I'm gonna tell you everything that's on my face in a second, but first let's talk about the foundation. So I ended up setting the foundation with the powder. I do think it was one of those that I maybe could have gone without a setting powder, but it looked very almost heavy. Like I feel like I needed something to kind of smooth out my pores and just smooth out my skin. So I went in with the Cover FX Illuminating Setting Powder. This is one of my favorite setting powders. I do feel like the powder helped to smooth out my skin. However, I feel very heavy right now. It kind of feels and looks like the MAC Studio Fix foundation. It has that look of I'm wearing foundation, which with a full face of makeup, I actually don't mind because obviously I'm wearing makeup. But if you're looking for that like everyday natural skin-like finish, this one isn't that. However, I do like the coverage that I got. I feel like this is gonna be one of those that it totally depends on what brush you use, how much product you use, how you apply it. It just has that feeling to me, but for the way that I applied it, I mean, I got pretty damn good coverage. I didn't use any concealer or anything over my acne and it fully covered everything with those two layers. Because I put on a second layer, that could be why it's feeling kind of heavy. At this point in time, it doesn't look or feel heavy to the point where I wouldn't wear it again. It just feels like I'm wearing makeup. So like usual, I set my face using the NYX Dewy Finish Setting Spray. This doesn't alter the finish of the foundation that much. Almost out of it. I feel so accomplished when I almost finish a product. It has for sure oxidize, which is actually perfect because now I feel like it matches me really well. So let's talk about what's on the rest. I found a contour shade that I really like and I am wearing a warm blush on top, so it's kind of tricky for you to just see the contour right now, but I snapped about it. It's the Morphe 9C palette. And it's this shade right here, this bottom left shade. It's actually almost identical to the NYX Taupe Blush, which is a great contour if you have pale skin, but they stopped making this. You can get it on Amazon now, but they stopped actually selling it. But this shade right here looks pretty much identical. On my eyes, all I used was this contour palette. I just used a mix of all these shades to create this eye look. And then on my lid is this Hot Makeup Luminous Eyeshadow in the shade Nothing to Lose. This is... So pretty. Such a nice formula. It feels almost like gel-like. For blush, I use the Hot Makeup Red Carpet Ready Blush in the shade Wanderlust. Peachy bronzy shade. It almost looks like bronzer on me, but I've been feeling the look of bronzer as blush lately. So I use that. And then as a highlight, I use my e.l.f. Illuminating Palette. This is one of my favorite highlights of life. I mean, look at that glow. I use this light shade right here, which I've hit pan on. What else? Oh, on the lips is the Solo Look by Depeche Girl collaboration. 
which is a very beautiful color. It's like this mauve rose almost. Really like the color. I've never worn it before, so we'll see how the formula holds up. So I'm going to go about my day, live my life, and I will be back to check in in a few hours. Okay, so it's now 1.11 in the afternoon. So the foundation has been on for four hours. So let's take a look. I only looked in the mirror one time the last four hours. I've just been working and instantly the first thing I noticed is this lip creasing. It's kind of out of this world. Whoa. So let's get real up close. As you can see, <laughs> these are pretty intense. Like, holy shit. Starting to look pretty heavy around my nose area right here. Getting some creasing. The nose area creasing is pretty normal for me, but this is very intense. Everywhere else looks pretty good at this point. My only other critique right now is that it just feels pretty foundation-y. Like when I move my forehead, I don't know, it just feels like I'm wearing a lot of makeup. But here you go. Take it all in. I have the camera on my computer standing desk right now. I don't know why I've never thought to do that out here. I usually like kneel on the hardwood floor. I feel like it actually matches now since it started out a little bit light. But if you start out with it matching you or being slightly too dark, it will definitely be like snooky status in a couple hours. So like I said, four hours, I will check back in at the end of the night. Okay, so it's now 6, 10 p.m. So the foundation's been on for nine hours. I figured we'd do this check-in in natural lighting too because there is still light. It's like 77 degrees in Seattle right now. What is going on? Thought we were in fall. So it doesn't look a whole lot different from the last check-in. My forehead actually looks pretty good. There's just major creasing around my upper lip pretty much everywhere. And I haven't even been talking or anything. I've literally just been on the computer working. So keep in mind that's with like no motion in my lips pretty much. It just looks pretty heavy. My forehead oil wise looks okay, but the center of my face right here just looks a little bit cakey. My pores and upper lip area just look bad. The rest of my face looks okay. These are just pretty intense and new ones have formed. There's like one, two, three, four. I don't know what's going on over here. I don't know if the camera is going to pick up the texture, but it just looks very textured in here. Is it horrible? No. Is it great in my opinion? No. I feel like we've had a lot of like duds lately in Foundation Friday. I need a good, I need a good one to come along. It just looks okay. I think there are way better drugstore foundations. If you want to know what my favorites are, I'll link my Holy Grail drugstore products video down below. I really don't even know if I would mix this one just because there's not something in it that I particularly like. For example, on one layer alone, it didn't have great coverage. The finish isn't that great. Shade-wise, it oxidized. So there isn't really one thing in it that I would think would be good to mix with another product, if you know what I mean. I might try using it with like a smoothing primer underneath and maybe a different setting powder or not setting it at all. As far as what kind of skin types this would work on, probably not the best for dry skin. It doesn't have a super moisturizing feel when it goes on. And just the way it emphasized the texture and stuff, I would say if you have dry skin, stay away from this one. If you have oily skin with the powder, it held up pretty well as far as controlling oil. Mature skin would definitely stay away from this one just because it majorly settles into any lines that you have. Is it worth spending your money on? Probably not. I think your $8 or $6 could be better spent on a different drugstore foundation. So that's kind of my thoughts on this one. I just have my hair in a clip, so it's looking real funky right now. If you guys like this video and you're liking the Foundation Friday series, make sure you give it a thumbs up so I know. Let me know down below what products you guys wanna see in 15 Days of Foundation and in Foundation Friday. Love you guys, thanks for watching. See you in my next video, bye.